This is going to be a fun one, and I, I think it varies person to person on where you're at on this particular issue, um, but I'm going to go over my thoughts on it. So let's get the introductions out of the way. Twitter at JKZND4. Obviously, you could find the show on the website known as YouTube.com. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. I don't ask you to do it on the front end. If you get through it and you like it, go back and give it a thumbs up. Emails, always irishnd at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you could find me. Merchandise link is below. And by the way, I got a shirt being mocked up that I don't care if everybody else thinks is stupid. I love it and I'm going to wear it often. So keep your eyes peeled. And it's going to go up in the merchandise store if anybody else wants it or gets what I'm going at with it or where I'm going with it. But I think you guys in particular will appreciate it. So I can't wait to get my uh, my sample made so I could show it off on the show. I think you guys are going to get a laugh out of it. Okay, so here's the topic today. This isn't going to be a long episode. This is just something that I think about that I've lived through. And it's coming to me again in my mind uh, because of a local sports team. So here's the question. Is it ever okay to root for a team you love to lose a game? Not just any team, not just a team you kind of care about. Your team, the team you love. Okay, so for me, it's going to be obviously Notre Dame. Uh, but but I'm not just talking like a team you follow. It's got to be your team, the team you're a diehard fan of, the team you live and die every play with, okay? Is it ever okay to root for that team to lose a particular ball game? That's the question I have for you guys. So take a second and think it through. I'm going to give you a second. Think about it. What is your initial visceral guttural reaction when I ask this question, okay? Here's where I'm at. I not only say, yes, it's okay to root for the team you love to lose, but I would even go as far to say that you might be a terribly bad and awful fan if you disagree and take the other side of this argument. So some of you might get where I'm going with this. Others might say, "What is it? What are, John, are you crazy? You can never root for the team you love to lose. That makes no sense. You should want them to win every single game they play, right? Wrong. Wrong. If you think that, you're not paying attention. If you think that and feel that, you're not thinking of the big picture, If you think that and feel that way, you're locked into one particular moment. You are not capable of seeing the big, broader picture. You are looking for little band-aids when open-heart surgery is involved if you believe that you can never root for the team you love to lose. It's a very short-sighted position to take to just say, oh, it's my team. I got to have them win every game no matter what always going to root for him. It's short-sighted. So let me explain how. So I'm only okay with rooting for the team you love to lose in extreme, dire, awful, bad circumstances only. Okay. So what do I mean by that? If I'm going to qualify my position by saying that it has to be an extreme circumstance, What are those instances? To me, times where it's clear and obvious the team and organization is going nowhere and a a win in this moment is meaningless to the big picture overall goal and simply prolongs mediocrity being accepted. Okay? So, Those are what I mean by the instances. Now, let me give you a very practical example everybody watching this show probably can relate to, okay? So, if I'm going to describe a scenario like this where I'm rooting for Notre Dame to lose, here's what I'm picturing. 
I know it sounds messed up that I would root for Notre Dame to lose, but follow me here. I promise you it makes sense. I never take a position in sports without thoroughly thinking it out from every angle. Nothing I do is random or on a whim. I think everything through. Follow me here. My best example of this is late in the Charlie Weiss era when you knew this was going nowhere. We've given it a bunch of years, had some good times, but it was obvious He wasn't getting over the hump. We weren't going anywhere. We were spinning our wheels, if not worse, in neutral. Totally just the picture of mediocrity. Just just average. Just average. Losing to teams we shouldn't lose to. Just bad, okay? Late in the Weiss era, I remember multiple games sitting there at cold, miserable Notre Dame Stadium, It's November. We've already lost a handful of games. We're playing for nothing. There's no emotion in the stands. Everybody's cold and miserable. We're not ranked. You know, we got four or five losses. We're playing BYU on a cold November windy afternoon with nothing on the line. And I remember sitting there with my brother and we're struggling and it's just bad. We're just we're just not playing any defense, making bad mistakes. Already got four or five losses in the bag. And I just leaned over to my brother and said, I, I hope we lose this game. I hope we lose this game. And he got what I meant right away. And what I meant was, what good did it do us to win that one game against BYU? What good did it do us? We were already playing for nothing, not ranked, had no respect. The season's over. You're not going to a major bowl game. You're just doing nothing. So after multiple years of Charlie Weiss spinning his wheels, doing nothing, I was over it. I had given up all faith and hope he could get us to a respectable position. And in my opinion, we were at the point where I just needed Notre Dame to lose enough games to get rid of him and start over because this was going nowhere and everybody could see it. So to me, in that instance, the worst thing that could happen is Notre Dame wins a meaningless game and it means Charlie Weiss gets a whole nother year to reaffirm mediocrity and we do it all again. To me, that was the worst case outcome. There was no faith, no hope, none. So to me... I looked at it as, here's here's how I look at all my sports decisions. What is the quickest path from where the team is to a championship? That guides all my philosophical decision-making with the sports teams I follow and the moves I want them to make, either with players, coaches, whatever. What is the quickest path to get this team to a championship because that's the goal. To me, in the Charlie Weiss example, getting him out of there was the only thing that was going to give us a chance because it was going nowhere. It was going nowhere. He had plenty of time to prove otherwise. Wasn't happening. We're just average, mediocre, and I couldn't do it again another year. Sign up for that another year. A proof of that for another year. So to me... The quickest path in that moment to get Notre Dame closer to a championship involved getting rid of Charlie Weiss, starting over with somebody new, whoever it was. Okay? So, in that instance, I felt totally fine hoping Notre Dame loses. Now, let's be clear about this. That doesn't mean I'm sitting at Notre Dame Stadium, burning my Notre Dame gear, waving a BYU flag around, cheering when something bad happens to Notre Dame. That's not what this was. When I say rooting for us to lose, it's not me rah rahing the other team all happy. This is a miserable, worst-case scenario type place to be. I'm not saying I was happy doing this or I'm wearing the other team's colors. What I akin this to is your loyal golden retriever that you loved growing up and then it gets so old and it's it hurts so much for it to walk around, it's miserable. The humane thing to do is to bring it out back and end its life. 
even though you love it and it hurts, the right thing to do is to end that dog's life because it's in misery. That's what I, that's how I look at this. It's the same exact thing. It's miserable. You hate going through it. It's the worst possible place to be as a fan, but I knew it needed to happen. I knew it needed to happen. So you got to have the emotional maturity to understand in that moment how bad this sucks, that things have gotten to a point where the best thing for this team is to lose games and burn it all down. It's a horrible place to be. I didn't enjoy this. This was pure misery, but something bad happened in Notre Dame. I'm thinking if it helps us get rid of this guy and give us a real coach, then I guess I'm okay with it. So that's what I mean. So you got to, it has nothing to do with this one little game, one moment, you feeling good for that afternoon. What good does it do you to beat BYU to go 500 or seven and five or whatever when you're going nowhere? It does you no good. It does you no good. Okay, so sometimes winning that week's game actually hurts the cause because what if that's the one win that's enough to take the heat off that they decide to bring the guy back and then you're mediocre the next year? It's a miserable, not fun place to be, but sometimes this approach is necessary. So some of you are going to say to this, Some of you are going to say to this, John, that's not, this is the biggest argument against my position of being for this sometimes. The argument would be, okay, you don't like what the coach is doing, but isn't that mean for the current players that you're there at their game and you're a Notre Dame fan, you're kind of hoping they lose? I'm sorry, but I can't be more clear about this. My loyalty is to the reputation, respect, and integrity of the Notre Dame brand overall. I am not loyal to every individual player and coach. I am loyal to the Notre Dame football brand and its respect and how it's viewed throughout the country and the world. That's my loyalty. I have no loyalty to individual players and coaches. I have loyalty to the integrity and the reputation of the Notre Dame brand, okay? Those are different. So I'm sorry if that means some of the players, I'm like, dude, if we lose, it just needs to happen. And that's, I'm sorry, they should have won more then. Should have won more. Should have been better. So yes, that sucks for the players, But I'm not loyal to them. I'm loyal to the brand and what is best for the integrity and the the way the, the brand is viewed. That is my loyalty. So when I see Notre Dame in a position where they're mocked, ridiculed, mediocre, and nobody cares, that offends me. That's going against what I'm for, protecting that logo, brand, what it stands for in the past and current. So that's my response when people say, well, that's not very nice to the current players. I'm sorry. This is bigger than that. This is bigger than that. The Charlie Weiss example is a lot bigger than those individual players that day. He was doing damage to the reputation, the Notre Dame brand, by being bad or at best mediocre for a lot of this time. At the end, I'm not saying Charlie didn't have some good times. Bush push weekend was a magical weekend for me, except for the ending. I'm not saying there wasn't good times, but towards the end, every Notre Dame fan can agree. He had to go. This had to happen. He had to go. This had to happen. So as much as it hurts, you got to put the old dog down. You just have to. Okay. So, so my loyalty is to the overall brand integrity, not those individual players and coaches. And their job is to maintain the solid reputation of the brand. And when they don't, sometimes you got to endure short-term pain for long-term gain. Okay? So here's where this really started to hit me this week and why I'm doing this show now. The Chicago Bears are quickly entering this territory with what they're doing. Okay? So... 
I reserve hope that the moves they're making, especially with the quarterback and everything else, I reserve a one percent of hope that that these moves that don't make sense to me now are a part of a bigger plan that hasn't been revealed yet to get an actual real quarterback at at the Bears that I have never seen in my entire life. Okay, we have not had a franchise quarterback my entire life. Okay, so I reserve that one percent that that everything they're doing is a setup for something bigger that does result in them getting a uh, a franchise quarterback, Russell Wilson or whatever. But as we sit right now, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Now, I'm not going to act like I'm as emotionally invested in the Bears as Notre Dame. I am not. They are my local team. I never miss a game. I can't remember the last time I didn't watch every play of a Bears game. They're the local team. That's what I follow. I love football. It is not emotional to me like Notre Dame. And in a lot of ways, that makes it easier for me to talk about with the Bears because there isn't that emotional tie that I have with Notre Dame. But I'm getting to that point with the Bears where so far in this offseason, the moves they're making are making the team worse, not better. Worse, not better. Okay, so so all the other position groups aside, Ryan Pace would have already been out to me just because of what he's done at the quarterback position already. It is the single most important individual position in sports. You don't win Super Bowls anymore without an elite guy. It's all offense driven, and the Bears cannot get it right. Cannot get it right. Drafting Mitch over Watson and Mahomes, I will give you Mahomes. Not a lot of people were on him ahead of time like they're jumping on the bandwagon now. Watson, picking Mitch over Watson, nope, nope, never going to be okay. Never going to be okay. So you have Glennon, Foles, Mitch, Chase Daniel. Now, now <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. Okay, the, 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 the Bears now, <laughs> I'm trying to do this without getting mad. It's, it's just so funny. Um, I, I, the Red Rocket you got now, like, like the Bears quarterback, now they have two of the best backup quarterbacks you can have. But between Foles and the Red Rocket, I would rather have Mitch than them guys. At least he can run around a little bit. It's all a disaster. And so if and then and then they get rid of Fuller, they might have to get rid of Akeem Hicks because they don't know how to manage the cap. I just it's a total joke. There's no accountability. It's mistake after mistake. They dig a hole, then they have to double try and dig out of it. It's a total disaster. And I'm over it. So if there is no broader move to flip you know, give the red rocket to somebody else and we get a quarterback with at least some upside. I don't, I don't know if that's not coming, I'm over it. So I'm in that position with the bears where that this ain't going to work, lose as much as you need to lose to start over. Do I trust that the front office, even if they started over, would I are good guys the next time? No, cause I don't trust them at all, but it, I, it's at least a chance. Cause to me, Ryan Pace is clueless. You do not get to swing and miss at the quarterback position with all the money they've given these bad quarterbacks, bad draft decisions. Now you're ripping apart the defense to make cap space. The defense, the only thing that was good. I'm over it. I'm over it. So if this doesn't evolve into some Russell Wilson deal or something, I'm done. I'm in that position with the Bears where I'm just going to hope they lose to blow it all up because this is going nowhere. It's going nowhere with the Red Rocket and Foles. I I just, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. The lack of elite QB play from any team I care about at all is why I have no hair left. Okay? So I'm at that position with the Bears unless they pull something out. And that's the other thing. It's like, well, 
Ryan Pace offered this and this and this, and they tried to get Russell Wilson. Oh, they're, so what? So what? What am I supposed to react to to that? Here's two things. One is, your job is to try and make moves to improve the team. You don't get extra credit for trying to pull something off. That's your job. Number two, you're only in this position because you dug yourself this hole by bad decision making. So you're only this desperate because of your own stupidity. It's not like Ryan Pace inherited the disaster. He caused a disaster. Okay? So that's the frustration too. It is not, I have nothing against the red rifle, the red rocket, whatever you want to call them. It's not his fault the Bears pulled him in here. I have nothing against Mitch. Mitch Mitch should have never been drafted second. Oh, John, so many analysts on the pre-draft, uh, the mocks had had him up. Am I am I supposed to feel good that you're mixed in with a bunch of other people who were also wrong? That doesn't make me feel any better if you want to point out all the other people that were also wrong. Okay. Andy Reid seemed to see uh, something in Mahomes. Look how that turned out. 11 games is what Mitch started at North Carolina, and they weren't even interested in Deshaun Watson and all that he accomplished through his, his time at Clemson. So, no. So, I'm there with the Bears right now where if they don't end up with Wilson somehow or at least a quarterback with upside when there is none with Foles and none with the Red Rocket, I'm in this position where I need them to lose so we could start over and try something new because I can't handle it. I just, I simply can't handle it, okay? So, I hope this makes sense to you guys. Sometimes you got to look at the bigger picture. And to me, the bigger picture, sometimes you got to do tough things like eat some losses that really hurt you to end up in a better place. So, That's where I'm at. If you say no, you can never root for your team to lose at all. I just think you're not looking at the big picture because there are times where that is your quickest path to a title. And that should dictate all moves. All moves should be analyzed through that one lens. What is our quickest path from where we're at to a championship? Sometimes the quickest path is losing games. It hurts. It sucks. It's sad. It's a terribly low, miserable place to be. But I've been there multiple times with Notre Dame, and and I'm there with the Bears. And unless they pull off a miracle, I can't handle it anymore with the Bears and what they're doing. They're getting worse. Every time I log into Twitter, they're worse than they were before. I can't handle it, okay? So that's where I'm at with this, you guys. Bad place to be, but there are certainly times where I've needed my team to lose to get us into a better place because we were going nowhere. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Talk to you on Twitter. Peace out.